Hello, I'm Terence Park, and I've written a book about my hometown, Burnley. The town is justly famous for its history association football club, Burnley FC, and many fine books have been written on that club, also known as the Clarets. However, my book, although history and nostalgia dwells on other less well-known matters, To set the scene, Burnley is a town in Lancashire, England. Its name is said to derive from Brun Lee, meadow by the Brun. This would give it an Anglo-Saxon origin. In 1559, Burnley Grammar School was formed. It survived until the 20th century. In 1971, after 40 years teaching at the school, Mr. W. D. Fraser retired. He reflected on changes in school life. Formerly, there were no school meals or special transport, and until 1959 the school was scattered over town. Physics, art and woodwork were taken in the college, which was the home of the high school. There was firm enforcement of the rule that grammar school boys and high school girls should not meet. P.E. took place in Gorman's Gym on Bridge Street and Ebenezer was used as an annex for seven classes. All the school had games in the last two periods on Wednesday afternoon. Football in winter was held at Walshaw, known as Swamp Top, where pitch 11 always seemed to be under water. In summer, Cricket was held at Turf Moor Cricket Ground. The headmaster ruled that the game should not end before 5.30pm and that if the game finished early, i.e. before 5.15pm, two more innings should be played. The introduction of free school meals was of great advantage to poorer families because it meant that they received at least one decent meal in five days of the week when food was scarce after the war. Appearance has, if anything, become more sloppy. Whether this makes any difference or not, I'm not sure. If I were giving an interview, I'd be inclined to favour a boy with a smart appearance. When I first arrived, I remember the majority of the pupils were fee-paying, and the uniform of the day was black blazers and grey striped trousers in winter and blazers and flannels in summer, and everybody wore a cap, even the prefects. Behaviour in class, if anything, has altered for the worse. There have always been bad boys in the school. I think that any change in personal conduct is a result of public and parental slackness rather than the lack of discipline in school. It's much easier now for boys to approach members of staff That doesn't mean that in the old days the boys couldn't do this. It's just that attitudes of some members of staff have changed. There's been an increase in the numbers of art students, but there have always been more boys doing science than arts. Another thing, the caretaker used to have a weekly filling of ink pots. This happened on Friday afternoon every week, when he would come round with a watering can full of ready mixed ink and it jolly well had to last you until the following Friday. The war had an effect on the school, mainly because of the shocking business of coupons. In consequence of this, there was no insistence on school uniform. Families simply could not afford it. I hoped, actually, that I would never see the school as a comprehensive school, and I think I've just about made it. That's a reflection by Mr. D. W. Fraser in 1971. I think I was in my fourth year at school then. Thanks for listening.